are now working on the RCA CTC 28 TV chassis and I've started replacing the caps. I found that there was uh, there's some caps here that were just wired just sort of a single cap uh, style so I replaced those but these are the electrolytic cans up here and I've been able to find some other places to mount some of those caps just going back to the source where the cap is needed because they would run wires uh, going some, a pretty far distance up the chassis from where the cap was actually hooked up to something to uh, where the multi-stage electrolytics were. So you know, I was able to replace this one just right on the circuit board here. I was able to mount this one uh, to a mounting lug here and just insulate the other lead with heat shrink tubing and it's on there pretty good. And I'm going to mount this other one here on the AGC control and I'm just uh, going to put some more heat shrink tubing over the joint there where the two wires hook to the old cap lead. But one thing that it's a common problem in RCA tube type TVs is burned wiring and you notice down in here there's burn, there's a burn terminal strip and also really brittle wiring. This resistor ends up producing a lot of heat and there's just kind of a kind of a clumsy solder job there to paste it back together to get it going again. I'll see if I, I may need to put a new terminal strip in there to try and uh, try and get that. They, they really should have mounted that maybe at the front of the chassis or something as a heat to serve as a heat sink and I might even do that. I might just mount the mount the resistor out here or something to get it away from to get it away from the chassis or get it out of the chassis to allow that heat to dissipate a little bit better because the resistor produces heat and it ends up just cooking all the wiring in here. So I'm going to keep replacing caps on on this chassis here. Here's more detail of that really brittle wiring that was burned by that resistor. You can see here there's a wire and the insulation just is flaking off of it. You need to see where that particular wire goes. Right there you can see. I went down to the room where the TV cabinet is and I think I may be able to mount that resistor out here somewhere. So I think I might mount it outboard of the chassis just to get that heat out from under there. I've got it desoldered now. I'm going to redo all this wiring where it was burned. Now I've got all the new capacitors in and I've replaced uh, where the resistor is located. Hopefully this will work out okay to put it out here. We'll double check the clearance once we get it into the cabinet. There's a lot of electrolytics in here. Just kind of fit them in where I could where I could fit them. Use some cable ties to help hold them in place there. So I've got all the new electrolytics and got the the wiring redone. And so now I'm replacing the uh, diodes. The diodes are up here. Let's see if we can get a better look at them here. There are the old diodes. And I've already desoldered one of them. One of them, that one I desoldered, one of the ends wasn't even soldered onto the chassis or to the circuit board very good. I'm going to replace them all with new 1N4007 diodes. And once I replace the diodes, I think I'll be ready for a test. I'm going to put the, eventually, after I test it, I'm going to put the relay on for the power switch. And I'm going to put in a cathode current test point for the horizontal output tube and for the regulator. And I'm going to put a fuse on the horizontal output tube. I've broken the circuit going into the power line filter choke so I can put an additional fuse on the power line. Later models of these RCA tube type sets 
also fuse the power line because the circuit breaker here is just in the B plus circuit, just the high voltage circuit feeding the rectifier diodes. I've now got the chassis reassembled back in the cabinet and it's important to make sure that the CRT grounding strap contacts the chassis. I always like to screw the chassis in completely on these because if you don't you could end up with a bad connection to the to the uh, shield of the CRT which connects to the external coating and you could have high voltage arcing. In addition I put a ground strap, ground connection up to this little ground connection here which connects to the uh, IF cable coming out of the tuner. I got the yoke plug hooked back up, got the convergence plug hooked back up and I got the high voltage lead back on. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now. I've got the tuner still in the service position here. So I'm going to plug it in. I've got the fuse in. I've got the 7 amp fuse in the power line. And I bypassed the degausser. Got the new diodes in it, but there was no degaussing noise because the I just bypassed it because the thermistor was bad. And the tubes are lighting up here. And here's some high voltage. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, we've just got a just got a raster. Looks pretty looks pretty good. Got good vertical deflection, but we've got no uh, video signal or no no signal coming through the tuner. Let me, I'm going to try changing the tuning knob here. Let me adjust the volume. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit of hum from the volume, so... I think what I'm going to try to do, first of all, is to make sure I'm getting power to the tuner. If that doesn't work, I might have to go and check the IF circuits out because I think it's either in the tuner or the IF that we're having the problem. But the high voltage is good and the uh, deflection is good. So it shouldn't be all that difficult to figure out where the problem is now. Now I'm testing that we've got DC voltage to the tuner and it looks like we've got 251 volts. So we do have power to the tuner but we still might have a tube related problem or some other problem here. What I might try to do is to substitute in another tuner from another set and that will help localize the problem as to whether it's in the tuner itself or in the IF stage. Because probably a bad tube by itself, unless it was totally dead, wouldn't reason. Maybe a bad oscillator or something, but I'm going to try hooking up another set with a known good tuner to this and what I'm going to do is to use an isolation transformer on the other uh, set to make sure that it's safe. So let me get that hooked up and we'll see if we can get any signal into the IF and that will help localize the problem. Here's the set we're going to use as the donor set, so to speak, for the, the tuner hookup. We've got snow on the screen. I'll try and see if I can get snow on the RCA TV and then if so we'll go ahead and hook it up and see if we can get a signal through it. It's got it hooked up with the isolation transformer here which is very important because this is a hot chassis set. You could end up with a short circuit and shock hazard if you don't have the isolation transformer on. What I'm going to do now is to uh, I'm going to unplug it and then I'm going to do the hookup to the RCA set. I've just got a blank raster on the Zenith set. I've got the IF output cable hooked up to the RCA set here. 
but still got nothing. I don't hear any sound. There should be snow on the screen. Yeah, still nothing. So that leads to a potential problem in the IF circuitry. Either the IF or the, the video output. So probably need to go take the set back to the workbench and try and figure this out. I'm going to take it back there. We'll take out the horizontal and vertical output tubes so that there's no high voltage. One thing more I'm going to test is hooking up the RCA tuner to the Zenith and see if I can uh, see if I can get a signal from the RCA tuner just to double check it both ways. Now this proves that the RCA tuner is working. I've got a cable hooked up to the IF output of the RCA tuner and I've got it hooked up here to the input of the Zenith IF stage. And it it may be that the audio signal, audio circuit in the Zenith is not aligned exactly to that IF frequency because I'm having trouble with the audio being noisy I'm using the DTV converter. So that proves that the RCA oscillator and mixer and everything is working good in the tuner. And we can concentrate on the uh, IF and video stages as far as why there, there isn't any signal getting through that through into the, uh, the CRT here on the RCA. I'm going to take this down to the, back to the workshop and won't need video to start out with. I think I can start out with just observing the sound, see if I can get, because if I can get sound through there ought to be picture too. So I'm going to discharge the CRT, you're going to unhook everything and then take it down to the workshop. Now we're going to discharge the CRT. I've got a screwdriver which is connected to the CRT shield with an alligator clip. I'm going to put the screwdriver up under here until we hear a spark. Let's see here. Didn't get much of a let's see here, didn't get much of a spark. But I know I, I touched it, so it ought to be discharged now. We're going to re-discharge before reassembling because the CRT can build up a charge on its own after it's been discharged. So for just to be doubly safe, we'll re-discharge before putting it back together.